Okay, so here's a really incredible, uh, incredibly important skill to have, and that is being able to find the equations of asymptotes of functions. Uh, we're asked in this example to find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes of y, and we're going to let y equal 5x over x minus 1. Um, this is not a negative sign here. So the first thing we're going to do is this. To find the horizontal asymptote, what you're really looking for is end behavior. Um, so what we want to know is what happens as, as, as x becomes incredibly uh, large or incredibly small. So we're going to look at it this way. Um, right there is this rule, and, and I hope, hopefully you know that this rule, that what we're going to do here is we're going to compare we're going to compare the exponents of the lead coefficients. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to compare the exponents of the, of the variable. So in this case, we have 5x to the first power, and down here we have x to the first power. So what we know by that, and this is rules that you should memorize. We can prove this out algebraically. It's really easy to prove out, and you can just keep plugging in numbers to figure it out. But what we, we know is if this number and this number match, then the horizontal asymptote is the ratio of the lead coefficients. So this has a lead coefficient of, let's take a look, this has a lead coefficient of 5, doesn't it? This has a lead coefficient of 5, and this has a lead coefficient of 1, right? So the horizontal asymptote is simply y is equal to 5, is the, is the equation of the horizontal asymptote, okay? There are other rules for how this works, and you should look into them, and I've actually done other videos on this, but this is the problem that came up. Let's do the vert, let's find the vertical asymptote. So here's the vertical asymptote. And to find the vertical asymptote, what we really want to know is what values of this function are actually forbidden, which values can't happen. So what we're going to do is look again at this, and we're and what we're going to pay a spe a special attention to at this point is the numerator, I'm sorry, is the denominator. And we're going to ask ourselves, when is the denominator, or for what values, equal to zero? We're just going to ask ourselves that in the form of, a, of an algebra one question. We're going to take this piece down here. We're going to say, well, when is x minus one equal to zero? And x minus 1 is equal to 0 when x is equal to 1. And we can plug that in and find out. And we say, okay, well, if x is equal to 1 up here, we have 1 minus 1. And 1 minus 1 is 0. And if we have 0 in the denominator, we have an undefined function, don't we? Uh, we have a domain issue, right? The only caveat to that is this. So here is what I think the equation of the vertical asymptote is. The only caveat to that is to make sure this is crucial to make sure that this value doesn't make the numerator and the denominator equal to zero. If it does, we have something called the indeterminate form, and, and it means that we have that this is factorable and that um, we have a removable discontinuity. So we have to check that in this case, do we have that? So 5 times 1 is equal to 5, and 1 minus 1 is equal to zero. So this is not an indeterminate form. This is, now just as it said, this this value is undefined. It's undefined, but it's not the indeterminate form. So it's undefined. So we can say clearly that at x is equal to 1, our function is not defined. So we can't, it doesn't have a height value at that. Thing. So here's the equation of the vertical asymptote, and here's the equation of the, <coughs> of the horizontal asymptote. All right? All right, hope it was helpful.